Okay. Hey, can you guys see me? You can see me now. Hey, okay, what's up? I'm excited about this. This is gonna be really fun. Um, in case you missed the memo about what we're doing this evening, um, I'm here, I have a glass of wine, I'm chilling. This is gonna be like super informal, but I wanted to show you guys my process of building an app and an app idea. And I've actually never done this before. Like I've never opened up the entire process to like show everybody what I'm working on. This is the first time I've ever done that. I occasionally will share like insights about what I've been building with the students that are in my Apps Without Code Bootcamp program, but I never actually like show the whole process of me doing it. So I'm excited, I think this is gonna be fun. Can you guys hear me? Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. Somebody said in the chat they can't hear, so just. I just wanna make sure my audio works. Yeah, let me know in the chat if you can hear me. I'm gonna assume you can. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. I kinda of wanna just like go with the flow of this. If you wanna just like join and get a drink, like I have one and just like chill as we do this. If you wanna take some notes about the process, that's cool. However, it helps you to kind of get um, a sense of applying what I'm doing to what you could be doing for your own app idea, right? So I'll try to make the connection as much as possible. Like here's what I'm doing, here's why I'm doing it. Like the why is gonna be really important. So if, if there's ever a point where I don't tell you the why and you're like, hmm, I wonder why she's doing that. Just like ask me, I can see everything you're commenting. So like just throw your question into the chat. Um, somebody says, Ms. Benna says, I have my glass of wine. Perfect. Um, yeah, so so if you have questions about stuff, like Jeff, for example, is like, I'm super curious about this process. And you said that you already have 194 people who are interested in the app. Like, how'd you do that? Right. Like, so so I'm going to show you that. Um, and I'm going to also walk you through this process. By the way, just quick heads up. If you're in my app to that code bootcamp training program, you may recognize some of the parts of the process that I'm gonna go through because it's the same thing that I teach you guys. Um, so the first thing is I wanna share with you guys what my app idea even is in the first place, right? So uh, I came up with this app idea originally. I'll give you some context on how I came up with the idea super quickly and then I'll show you what the idea is. So I came up with this app idea because I was trying to learn about YouTube. Um, I was trying to learn about YouTube and specifically I was trying to learn about YouTube advertising. Um, there's a couple of questions. Uh, is this a, re a recording? Is this live? And what time will you wrap up? I'm just gonna be here for an hour, but I'll probably do more of these because it won't be just a one day process. So I'll probably make it a series. So I anticipate I'll come back tomorrow and keep working on it and you can kind of tune in as we go. And yes, I'm live right now. So uh, context on the app idea, what the heck is the app idea in the first place? So I came up with this app idea because I wanted to learn about YouTube advertising. I mainly run my, my company and we do Facebook and in Instagram advertising, but we don't do any YouTube advertising. And I was like, I don't even know how that works. I want to learn. And so I went to go try to find an online course on how to do YouTube ads. And it was kind of hard. Like I spent a couple weeks looking for a YouTube ads course. And I wanted to see like what people thought about the teacher. Did they like their teaching style? What was their teaching style? Like there was kind of no way for me to get that good information about what courses were out there for what things and what skills. And I was like, why isn't there some sort of like directory, some sort of app, some sort of experience where I can go and see like rankings for the best YouTube's ad course, where is that? Um, now mind you, and this is like where your idea comes into play too, there might be something out there that already exists. Like it, it's very well possible that something already exists. A lot of times when I talk to people about their app ideas, they get scared because they're like, oh, if somebody else is doing this, if somebody else is um, doing something similar to what I wanna do, I can't do it. Right, Elena said in the chat, teachable is teachable, something like that. 
So not really, like Teachable allows you to create your own course, but it doesn't show me all the top courses for a particular topic. And, and if they're, that person doesn't teach on Teachable, then like, I don't know. Some people are even in the chat saying like, my company does this kind of training. I don't even know about you. Like, where do I find you? Right. So, so that's where the idea originally came from. I was trying to find a YouTube um, training course and I couldn't find it. Right. Like that's where it started. Now, what is my idea? So to show you what my idea is, I want to walk through the first thing that I do when I come up with, hey, Marcus, the first thing I do when I come up with an app idea. And the first thing that I do is I write something called a makes it easy sentence, a makes it easy sentence. And I'm going to show you like the formula for how you write your makes it easy sentence. And the makes it easy sentence is a um, a structure for really simply explaining what your app idea is to someone. Now, I'm going to show you the makes easy sentence. Let me share my screen. Let me know when you can see my screen. I'm going to share it right now. Let me know when you can see this on my screen. Can y'all see this? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, makes it easy sentence. So this is just as if you're like, what is this workbook you're working in? I don't know what this is. This is the workbook that I give my apps without code bootcamp students. These are the students that I work with and train more intimately. I give them this workbook for thinking through their app idea. So if you're wondering like, what is this? Um, that's what this is. It's for my students, but I'm gonna walk through it myself. So what this is, this workbook is, is a series of questions. You can see the questions in yellow. And then in blue, it's gonna write a one sentence easy description for me to describe what my business idea is. Because I'm gonna take this one sentence description and build upon it and figure out my marketing strategy and all my things and build it all based on this sentence. So that's why I always start with the makes it easy sentence. If somebody asks you like, oh, you have an app idea, what does your app idea do? If you hit them with a response like, uh, uh, well, hmm, it is not a good look. Like you need an articulate uh, answer for this. So uh, let me show you how this works. So the first thing it asks me, I'm just gonna answer the question. So it says, what is the name of your app or company? I don't know, I don't have a name yet. So for now, I'm just gonna put my company because I don't have a name yet. I'll come up with one later. That's, that's like a total distraction. And you'll notice this will be a trend in how I work today. I am actively trying to avoid the distraction landmines because it is so easy to get distracted by stuff that doesn't even matter. Like you'll watch, for example, I'm going to do this process with no website. I'm not going to build a website. There's no reason to. I'm just skipping that part because it's a distraction. So um, anyway, back to what I was doing. So I don't have a name for my company yet, but who specifically is this going to target? Well, this is going to be who my paying customers are, right? Who are my paying customers going to be? Now, there's going to be for this app idea that I have. Somebody says, I love shiny objects, Daniel says. Yeah, me too. That's why I have to avoid them. So I want my app idea to have two, app, two different types of customers. So there's people who are looking for courses who want to learn something, particularly now that we're in like this quarantine. Everybody's sort of at home trying to level up their skills and there's time to do that, right? So there's people who have a... Um, who want to learn something. And then there's people who already have something that they're teaching, right? There's coaches and course creators. So there's two sides to it. Just like, um, and we call this like a marketplace, a two-sided marketplace. Just like in Airbnb, there's people who own homes and then there's people who are on vacation looking for a home. There's like two types of customers. So for me, there's going to be two types of players at play. There's people who are looking for a course and people who teach courses. and I am only gonna pick one to be my paying customer. I don't recommend that you choose both to be a paying customer if you're in a scenario where there's multiple customers, you only wanna pick one. So for me, I wanna pick my paying customer to be the person who has the course, who's teaching, because that person is actually um, spending money on marketing and trying to get customers. So I'm going to choose of those two options, I'm going to choose the course creator to be my paying customer. So now back over to my workbook, it says, who specifically is your target audience? Be specific. Do not say people. 
everyone, men, women, that's way too broad. So here I'm going to say um, um, online coaches and course creators. My internet's slow, so it's going to up. And I might even narrow it even more because I always tell people the riches are in the niches. The more specific you can get, the better. I might even say like with um, premium courses that are, let's say like $300 and above. Now, why did I pick that? Couple reasons. Um, Somebody mentioned in the chat, I don't remember who this was. You remind me if this was you. Somebody said like, well, there's Udemy, there's Teachable, there's like all these other sites where people can create courses and where they also where courses are listed. The only challenge that I had when I was looking for courses was I was looking for a premium course. I was looking for a course that had like coaching and consulting and like had somebody had spent a lot of time on course creation. And I'm not saying that buying someone's $29 or $9 course isn't gonna teach me a lot, but just personally, I found that they're not as valuable. Usually like $300 and up is where I have like really valuable experiences. Usually for me, actually like $1,000 is up from what I see. So I also noticed that those types of customers those types of people who are, I'm sorry, those types of course creators, they are spending and investing money in marketing, right? I'm not going to pick a customer who refuses to spend money on anything. That's where a lot of you guys get stuck with your app idea because you're trying to market your app idea to someone who's broke or to someone who has no willingness to pay and doesn't want to pay for anything. So, so this is me avoiding that potential mistake of going after a customer who ain't, who's not going to give me any money. I, 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 that's not what I'm doing here when I'm building a business. Now, uh, we can talk about ways to serve customers who don't have budgets. Like if you want to go after young people or you want to help um, homeless populations or something like that, there are ways to find, for example, you could go after a nonprofit who's been well-funded to solve issues for homeless folks, and they're trying to figure out how to reach people. Like You can do all sorts of things to go after somebody who has budget that will then go after the population who doesn't have money. There are other ways to get around that. But what's, in, what's critical is that you market your company to someone who's willing to pay for what you're doing, right? So, so that's why here, I'm going to go after online coaches and, and course creators that are charging more money for what they are teaching because the other ones are broke. Okay. All right. Just being real job. Okay. So let me keep going because the next question it has for me, and just if you're just joining, let me just recap. What I'm doing is I'm trying to put together a clear one sentence description of what my app idea is. And I'm gonna fill out these questions in yellow and then my sentence is gonna be produced below. So I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking these things through. And if you wanna write down for yourself these things, the first thing I ask myself, what's the name of the company? The second thing is who is your specific target audience? Don't say people women, everyone. That's like the biggest rookie mistake you can make when launching a business, trying to go after everyone. Right? When Facebook launched, they were just for Harvard students. Like literally that was the entire population of people. Harvard students, maybe like 4,000 people who could sign up. Right now, everybody and their mama uses Facebook. But when they started, it was a small population. Okay, let me keep moving. So what issues, challenges, or problems um, does your audience lose sleep over, or pull their hair out over, right? So now again, my audience that I'm talking about are the ones who are going to pay me. These are the course creators, right? So somebody who has that YouTube course that I can't find, right? So maybe like I can't stand spending money on Facebook advertising, not knowing if I'm going to get the money back or wasting money on Facebook advertising. Let me change that. That's something that my customer might say, right? If they have an online course and they're doing this, they're trying to find customers. Um, maybe they feel like they're wasting their money on their existing advertising. 
Do you guys have any other ideas for, for there are a couple people in the chat, by the way, who are like, I have a course that teaches YouTube. Like, what do you think my customer, someone who teaches a online course is trying to find customers, like what are they frustrated about when it comes to like getting in front of new customers? Anything else? Maybe like, I can't find customers who will, maybe even enough customers who will give me money. Okay. For my course or for my training, for my consulting, right? So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get inside of the brain of my customer. What is the thing that's keeping them up at night that they're complaining about? Because then I get to structure all of this, um, all of my app around what their problems are, right? Yeah, finding the right paid customers, all of that, right, exactly. So I could continue going on this. I'm gonna leave this here. I've got two challenges, things that they're frustrated with. And it asked me, what is the main problem that they have of these two? I would say it's probably um, finding enough customers. Right, I can't find enough customers who are going to give me money for my coaching and my course. Right, So I'm sure there's people who have YouTube courses that can teach me YouTube. I just can't find them and they can't find me. Right? All right. Now, the next question. Oh, this is a good one. This is like critical, critical. Does your audience know that they have this problem? Does your audience know that they have this problem? Some of y'all are trying to build apps and businesses for people who have no idea that they have a problem. It's like what your solution would be good for them if they knew about it, but they don't even know that they have an issue, right? Like you're solving something that's a nice to have that they're not even thinking about. So in this scenario, I think some of these people are these people who I want to make my customers, these people who have online coaching and course um, courses. I think some of them know that they have a problem, not all of them, right? I think that some of them are like, mm, I haven't even thought about my marketing yet. I'm still in the early stages of creating my training, right? But I think that for the most part, these people know that they have a problem. And then the next question is, is your audience actively searching for solutions to this problem? This is where some of you guys trip up too, right? I'm looking to build a business around something where people are actively looking for a solution and they're willing to pay for it, right? So I put yes for sure. Now, how many people have you spoken with who have told you that they have this problem? Well, I'm gonna get to this in a moment, I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna put my number in right now. Since working this on this on Sunday, since coming up with the app idea on Sunday, 216 course creators have told me that they have this problem, a lot. So I'll show you how I found those 216 in a moment. Uh, but let me finish this up. I have two more things to do. So uh, the next question, uh, Ms. Churchill says numbers. It's a numbers game. You want to get in front of as many people in order to get paying customers. Yeah, like if, if no one really knows that they have a problem and they're like not looking for a solution, you're going to have an uphill battle with your app idea. So, so these are things in my mind, like when I emailed you guys and I was like, I came up with a good app idea, the way I defined good is by thinking through some of these things. Elizabeth has a really good question. It's like, Elizabeth says, what if your audience doesn't think that they have a problem? My app idea will be a competition app um, of another company whose mode of operation is not excellence. Personally, I will not pursue an app idea where my customer doesn't think they have a problem. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it because not only do I have to do regular marketing to you to get you to choose me as opposed to a competitor, but not only do I have to do that, but I have to make you understand that you have a problem in the first place. So I have double marketing to do. I'm not gonna do that, right? So, so what I would do instead is figure out who does think that they have a problem. For example, Elizabeth, I don't really know a lot about what you're building, but like, I'm wondering if these companies, Elizabeth is on YouTube, so if you can't see Elizabeth's comments, because I'm looking at her comments on YouTube. Um, she says, um, oh, 
of the, her competition app is for a company and they're not really thinking about being excellent at whatever your app helps them be excellent at. Well, maybe there are some departments who are worried about excellence. The compliance department might be worried about excellence. So you got to figure out who cares, right? It's not like who is this a nice to have for, not who should have it, but like who already has money set aside to try to solve this and who's actively trying to fig fig get this thing solved, right? That's who we're looking for when we structure this. Okay. So let me finish up what I'm doing. And then I want to show you how I found 200 plus people who want to be customers for this and have told me they have the same problem. All right. So let me finish this up. So the next thing it says is what does your app do? Like, what is this app actually going to do to make it easy to solve their, this person's problem. So for me, it's going to um, create a list and I almost want to call it like a competition. I need to figure out the best words to describe it, but a, um, maybe I'll call it a directory and I'll even call it like for now, like a Yelp style directory. where people can find uh, your course and um, read ratings and reviews on it, right? And finally, my last question is, what is the biggest benefit to your audience uh, by getting this problem solved, right? Like how is their life gonna be better? So for my customer, and again, I'm trying to get in the head of my customer because all the stuff I'm going to do this evening is going to build upon this. So for this person who had that YouTube course that I was trying to find, how is that going to make their lives easier? Well, they're going to get customers uh, faster and more affordably. Right. Okay. So now that I've filled this out, my handy dandy workbook is going to put together a simple sentence for me to describe what my app idea is. So it says, my company makes it easy for online coaches and course creators with premium courses to create a um, Yelp-like or to maybe to show their idea on a Yelp-like directory where people can find their course and read ratings and reviews so that they get customers faster and more affordably, right? So they find customers faster and more affordably. I'm gonna tweak some of the language of this, but this is a really easy way to get my sentence clear so that when I'm describing it to someone, they get it. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit before I move on. Even though I'm gonna go after these people, I'm gonna just take this off for a second so that it's clear. I am gonna go after premium courses, but I'm just gonna use, um, more simple language here. So I'm gonna clean that up and then I'm also gonna update this a little bit just to wordsmith it a little bit. Now, some of you guys, when you do this, like I notice it in my, my training programs, people will get lost in the sauce trying to edit the wording for a long time. Don't do that. Just, just cut, edit it a little bit and then move on. You can change it later. So I'm just going to do a little bit here. I'm just going to say, um, to advertise their course. In a Yelp style directory, um, where people can read ratings and reviews on it so that they can get customers faster and more affordably, all right? All right, great. So here's my one sentence description and now you know what my app idea is, right? So so this kind of gives you a sense of, of how this works. Um, somebody says, great spreadsheet, I would love a copy. I unfortunately cannot share a copy of this workbook for you because it's only for folks who are in my bootcamp program, but I can send you a link later on if you are interested in doing my warrant as if it's an eight week training program to get your app idea up and running and out the door. Um, okay, Loretta says, I see that you said you have 216 individuals interested in your app. How did you find this information out? Like, how'd you get this? Okay, all right. 
check this out. I'm going to show you this next. So now that you know what my app idea is, right? Like I want to help people who have courses and are teaching things to advertise what they're doing in a big directory where people can read ratings and reviews so that they can find customers faster, right? And it came from an inspiration of wanting to find my own course um, on, I wanted to find a YouTube course and I couldn't find it. All right, so I'm going to move over to Loretta's question about how the heck you found that many people who were interested in this and needed this help. So now we jump into early stage marketing, right? And, and it was almost even before marketing, it's kind of like validation. It's validating that this is a good idea. Before I spend a lot of time and money and energy on this idea, I want to make sure that any that people care, right? Like I said in this workbook that my audience knows that they have a problem and they're actively searching for solutions, but I need to make sure of that. I need to be positive of that. So let me show you what I did. To get those 260 people, I went to Facebook. I went to Facebook. Jeff is like, this is the critical part. He's on the edge of his seat. I went to Facebook. And what I did was I went to a Facebook group and I identified two different Facebook groups where I thought my customers would be, right? There are two. I only posted in one. The other one I'm going to post in with you guys. Like you'll see me do it live. But the first thing I did was I found a Facebook group. Now, I happen to be, and you can just find these. There are a lot of Facebook groups like this. But I happen to actually already be in a Facebook group like this. And um, it is from my friend, Danielle, who teaches people how to launch their own course. So there are a ton of people. And I actually took her course when I started my course years ago. So there are a ton of people in this group. I think in this group, there are like 4,000 members of people who are trying to create their own course. But if I didn't already know about this course, I could just search for Facebook groups with the word course in them, course creator in them, right? So I went to this group and let me show you, I did this a couple of days ago. So I did a little bit of pre-work because I wanted to show you guys this. But check this out. Here's what I wrote in in the group and i want to break down exactly what i said and how i said it because i was strategic about this right uh, kara says that's exactly how i found out that my app idea would work through a facebook group right right i literally was in bed when i wrote this post y'all i wrote it like watching tv in bed here's what it says anyone need help finding customers for your course drop your email below and what you teach below if you're in so drop your email and what you teach below if you're in. Then I put a little context. Now, I already uh, was part of this group. So let me just break down what I did. Um, I first put the main point of the post up top and I put it in bold because I know for myself that I love to skim. I, I skim fast. I'm not going to read your whole Facebook post if I don't really know what it's about. So what I did was I put the topic up top in bold, just in case people weren't already invested in my post and didn't want to read the whole thing. You see it at the top. That was the first strategic thing that I did. Right. Now, the second thing that I'm going to do in this the second paragraph, what I did was I made it relevant to the group. I sort of introduced myself and what my relevance was to this group. Now, I have a specific relevance to this Facebook group, but if I did it in any Facebook group, I could still put why what I was posting was relevant. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I did this. One of the main reasons was I want the host of the Facebook group to, because essentially I'm using their Facebook group to do my marketing. At the end of the day, that's what I'm doing, right? But I want the host of the Facebook group to feel comfortable with that, to feel like um, I'm not just trying to like exploit their group for doing marketing. So what I did was I did a nod to the group first and the owner of the group. So I said, hey, y'all, my name is Tara Reed, and I'm one of Danielle's first Course From Scratch students. Danielle helped me build my Apps Without Code Bootcamp program, which now does over a million dollars a year. Emoji, emoji. Thanks, thanks so much. So that was the first context. If I had not had that specific relationship with that group, and I'll show you this in a second, I might say, like, let's say that the group is for... I don't know, dog walkers, I'm making this up, and your customer is a dog walker, right? I would say like, I've had, I used to have a dog walker that I loved so much, I had an amazing experience with her, and that's why I joined this group. 
right? So whatever it is, tie it in to what's happening. So that was the second paragraph I did. Then the third paragraph, I now start to tell people about what I'm working on. So I'm working on a new app that matches coaches and course creators with interested customers, right? Now, notice here that I didn't say I'm creating an app that helps people um, find YouTube courses, right? That was my original inspiration, but the way that I wrote it here, I specifically wrote it so that the people reading it in this group could see how it was valuable to them, right? So I'm working on a new app that matches coaches and course creators with interested customers, wondering if you guys would like to be a part of it. Right now, I'm looking for people teaching entrepreneurship related skills. Drop your email and what you teach below if you're in. Now, the reason I added this sentence, by the way, is because I was trying to scope my idea down. A lot of you guys have really broad, big change the world ideas, and that's great. But again, the riches are in the niches. So I want to start by listing entrepreneurship related courses just because like that's what I picked randomly. Um, and then I might add like lifestyle courses and cooking courses and all kinds of other courses later. But I'm intentionally starting with something specific now. I'm limiting myself intentionally. Some of you guys will have so much of an easier time thinking through your app idea, marketing your app idea if you make it more narrow if you shrink it a little bit and then expand it later on, right? Remember, Facebook launched just for Harvard students, then they added Yale, then they added other schools, and they added every every um, college, then they added everybody and their mama, and now my grandmother has a Facebook, literally. So that's how that works. Okay, so um, then the last thing I said, I added some juiciness to help them see why they should drop their email address publicly for everybody to see below into the comments. And I said, P.S., I'm going to be building the app live for my audience on Facebook this month and sending it to my email list of 70,000 people. So this will be great exposure to help you get clients because I have a big email list. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, I can't say this in my post because I don't have 70,000 people on my email list, so like, I can't do this. It doesn't matter. This would have been just as strong without this. It would have been just as strong without it. So let me show you, and I'm going to come back and make a comment about this um, because I have, I recognize that I have a strategic advantage because I have a bunch of people that I can share my app with to begin with. But I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about that in a second. I'm going to come back to that. But I just want to show you what the results were first of this post. So let me scroll down. You can see right here, there were 178, including myself, likes on this post. And there were 216 people who commented below with their email address saying, I'm in, All right? So people are saying, let me scroll down a little bit. People are saying all kinds of things. There's people at all different stages. Well, my computer won't scroll. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Carol says, hey, Tara, congratulations. I teach entrepreneurs how to manage and grow their personal and business wealth. Count me in. Here's my email. Um, congrats. This is amazing. Oh, wait. My scroll moved. Here we go. Would love to learn more and support. I'm a business strategist and branding expert. I teach branding. Here's my email. Literally, I have 216 interested customers right here, right? All I did was post in a Facebook group and I used this sort of specific formula for how to put that post in a way that was exciting for people where they said, ooh, I'll get value. But all I did was post a Facebook group while I was laying in bed. That's it. 216 customers and interested potentials right there. Let me pause for a second and just check in with y'all before I move on. Is this helpful? Like, are, are you guys sort of seeing how you could apply this to your own idea? Like, mind you, I came up with this idea this weekend. I didn't have anything put together. I don't have a name for it. I don't have a website. I don't have anything. Right now, all I'm doing is, first, all I did was just see, is anybody else interested? Before I waste my time, energy, invest in anything, like, let me just go find a Facebook group, post in that Facebook group, see what people think, what the response is. Is anybody going to respond, right? Then the second thing that I've done this far is I have just gotten clear for myself on 
how to describe in one sentence my app idea, right? That's all, right? That's all I'm doing. Now, I'm a big advocate for working smart, not hard. Working smart, not hard. Notice that I haven't started building the app yet. Personally, I think I'm kind of in the best way possible, kind of lazy, in that I want to make sure that if I go build this app, people are going to want it. I'm not going to spend all my time doing that if nobody wants it. I'll go come up. I got lots of ideas. I'll come up with a different idea. All right. So, so I just want to walk you through what this method is. Now, I want to pause for a second before I move on and address what Kim says. Kim says, um, I, this is an amazing method. I just don't have an idea. Great. Um, let me share a little bit of my process of how I come up with ideas in the first place. Cause I think that'll help some of you guys. All I do is I think about what am I irritated by right now? Or what are people around me irritated by right now? Right. So it could be anything. It could be like, I don't know, I just like moved and I bought a couch and there was no way to figure out if the couch was going to be too big or too small for the space. Or uh, actually, let me give you a slightly different formula. This will be easier. I want everyone to join me in this. I want you to type this into the chat. Ready to type in the chat? Here's um, what you type in the chat. What do you do for work? Tell me what you do for work. Like what kind of industry? Are you a musician? Are you an artist? Are you a, um, a strategist? Like what do you do? Tell me what you do for work. And so type it into the chat. Take a second and type that in. What do you do for work? Developer. Cool. What else? What do you folks do? What do you do for work? Healthcare worker, medical assistant. Perfect. What else do folks do for work? Graphic web designer, emergency management, HR at a charity, right. Travel advisor, government contracting, travel consultant, chef, operations. Great. Yeah. Okay, great. So this is an area that you happen to know more than most people about, right? Like, you know more than me about um, being an appeals coordinator for health insurance. I don't know anything about that, right? You know more than most people about that thing. Right. And if you don't believe that you do, that's like a confidence thing. It's it's true. You do. Most people don't know about this. Right? Personal styling. And right? they don't know about it. So my next question for you, once you have told me what you do for work in the chat, my next question for you is. What is something that is hard or time consuming about your job? It could be like something that's annoying for your boss and hard and time consuming for your boss or something that's hard and time consuming for you. By the way, if you're in between jobs, you can tell me, you can even say in between jobs and here's what's hard and time consuming about searching for a job or here's what I used to do, right? So what is harder time consuming about this, right? Um, let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. Checking in the process, right? The check-in process, the data analysis, interpreting requests, finding members, right? What's the number one thing that's just like annoying to do? Surviving COVID, go into more about that. Like what specific, because this is good. This is how like great app ideas arrive. What specifically about surviving COVID is time consuming or annoying right now? Requirement gathering, marketing, not being allowed to be innovative. Great, yeah. Too many meetings and not enough time being able to carve out enough time to work, great. Build an app around that. That's the thing you build your app around. And then you can go and take it to, it doesn't have to be your company, but like companies like the one you work for and say, hey, I've got this solution for your employees, solution for your team, solution for your companies. That's one quick way that I'll, I'll throw at you to come up with an app idea. As we go along, I'll keep moving through this process, but I'll give you a couple more activities to spark up app ideas for you. But the things that you guys are posting right now, these are all things that you can craft a business around. These are all things that you're not the only person who is who's struggling with it. You're not the only person who's got to deal with communicating with multiple suppliers. You're just not, right? There's a whole business around that. So that's my process just in a very rapid fire for coming up with the app idea in the first place, if that helps you answer your question. Now, I want to go back. I don't know if I can find it, though. Somebody had a question. I can't go back that far. 
I lost it. Okay. Can you repeat your question if you were the one who said, my boyfriend's looking at me crazy because I'm drinking wine in front of you guys. You don't care, right? We drink wine. All right. Um, the Somebody asked a question about what if you don't have a hook to get somebody to put their email address below? Who asked that question? Can you repeat that question? I just want to... Um, Jeff says that was incredibly simple. Yeah, it's not that hard to come up with an app idea, like, or come up with a business idea in general. Just like think about something that's hard and time consuming. There's like, I bet you have a ton. Um, okay. Jeff has Jeff has his whiskey. I'm with you on Jeff. I debated if I should have whiskey or wine. I might move over. Actually, we only have 20 minutes, so I don't have time. But tomorrow when I come on, I'll have whiskey just for Jeff. There we go. Okay, so the question was, what if I don't have a hook for, I can't remember the exact question, but it was something like, what if I can't get people to post their email address below? Something like that. Um, so let me, let me clarify here that there's a couple ways to do this. I'm not sure if the question was like, what if people don't want to post their email address? Or if the question was, um, what if I can't get people who are interested? Can somebody whose question that was, can you repeat that? I can't go back and scroll and see it that far back. It was just a few minutes ago though. Okay. Aw, Steph says, uh, as a graduate of Tara's course, if you like what she's teaching you here, this is how she conducts her class. I'm certain I would not be where I am in my development state without Tara. Aw, thanks. Oh, Loretta, it was Loretta. Thank you, Loretta. I was trying to find this. Okay, Loretta says, what if you don't have a hook where people would want to put their email publicly? How would you get it in Google form? Okay, okay, great, great, great. Like, would I do a Google form? Yes. So, um, let me show you what Loretta is talking about. Some people are not going to be um, comfortable posting in posting in the comments, right? Uh, posting their email address in the comments, which is okay. So the alternative is to just come up with a little form. And I'm going to show you this right now because I want to do this for another group. And I want to address Loretta's comment. And I also want to address Carmen's at the same time because Carmen says, my app idea has nothing to do with my Facebook groups. That's fine. Let's just go find a Facebook group that does. So like my app idea has nothing to do with dogs, but I can go and find dog walker or even like dog lover, whatever. Facebook groups, and there's Facebook groups for every single topic out there ever, right? Here we go. Here is a dog lover Facebook group with 86,000 members. Here's another one with 207,000 members. You can find a Facebook group for literally anything. So all you have to do is just go search for what your what topic your people would be in, what kind of group your people would be in. It could be like mental health advocates. It could be anything. Right. Um, okay, so I want to also address the question about other ways to get email addresses. Um, here's what I would do here. So let me think. I might do a two part strategy if I don't want to ask people to put their email address below. So let me show you this other group that I want to, I'm gonna do it now actually, um, that I think a lot of course creators are where I think my customers are, it's called ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is the name of like a website software and a lot of people who are my customers um, use it. So what I'm gonna do is go into the group, but the I, I kind of have a sense that the culture in this group is not to just post your email. So what I'm going to do is I could create a Google form. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to write the same exact. I don't know why my Internet is going so slow. Sorry, guys. I'm going to post the same exact post. I'm just going to tell you same exact post. But I'm going to instead of saying drop your email, I'm going to say comment below if you're interested. I'm going to intentionally say comment below if you're interested instead of saying click this link and sign up. 
Why? Why? Because, because if there are lots of comments on your post, Facebook will show it at the top to all the members. So I want Facebook to do my marketing for me. The reason I, uh, part of the reason I got so many responses is because people were being really active on my post. I don't know if you guys know that this is how Facebook works, but the more active people are, the more likes you get, the more comments you get, the more Facebook shows it to people. So I'm not gonna give them the link to sign up. I'm gonna instead, I'm gonna say, comment below. And then when people comment below, I'm just gonna respond and say, um, great, sign up here. So it'll do, I'll do manual work to do that, right? It's gonna take some manual commenting on people and talking to people after I, I post. Um, but I specifically want to do that, right? I, I specifically wanna just comment afterwards. Right. So so posting in Facebook groups is um, generally not. A, so, OK, Digi has a great comment. She says um, posting in a Facebook group could be against the Facebook group's terms of service. But it, it could be So, like sometimes Facebook groups say don't do any promoting in my group. Don't market in my group. Personally, personally, I'm going to post in there anyway. However, I'm going to make sure, and I want to go back to my post to show you how I strategically was smart about this. I spent the entire first paragraph giving props to the um, group creator. They're not going to delete my post because I'm. this whole thing is a cool testimonial for them. Right. See how I strategically did that to make sure that the owner of the group was OK with it. I gave him a whole paragraph of shout out. Right now, Danielle happens to be my friend. I happen to know her. But even if I didn't know her, like I wasn't sure if she was going to be OK with me posting in a group like this. Number one, as an entrepreneur, sometimes you just take bold actions anyway. But number two, I spent that first paragraph making sure that it was something that I, I was giving them credit and props and boosting them up. Right. So you may want to 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 add some some context here. Right. Now, this is an exception to the rule, but I want you to know that I'm about to post in about 25 different groups after this. I just picked one to start with, but I'm about to post in a bunch of them, a bunch of them. So I'll show you as we go through this week, I'll show you my process of doing that. I'm going to post in a bunch that I've never been a part of all kinds of Facebook groups. Right. I'm going to do that same kind of post. I'm going to modify it a little bit but I'm always going to give a nod to the post creator or the company, whoever it is that created that post. So you'll watch me over the course of the week do that. Okay, now um, I want to, what do I want to talk about next? I want to talk about business model next because I need to figure out <laughs> there he says, wow, drinking and building, that might be the solution for fear management. Oh, yeah, this is my normal mode. Like for me, it's it's like a cocktail and dubstep. Just like loud music and I'm just like working away. That's my thing. OK, so the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is pricing, because that's the next thing on my mind. Like, how am I going to make money from this thing? I already kind of have a sense that there are some people who are going to be interested. I've already gotten clear on like how to describe the app idea, but now I need to think through how I'm gonna make money from the app idea. And I think once I've done that, I can now start drawing out what I want the app to look like. I can feel confident that like, okay, this is something I wanna pursue and wanna jump into. So the next thing I wanna talk about is how to make money. Now I'm gonna return back to Oh, here we go. This workbook that I was working on, because this workbook has a lot of tabs. And again, if you're wondering what the heck this workbook is, this workbook is um, for my students that I work with to help them get their app ideas organized and know what to do next. Um, there also is a tab in here called the app idea generator to help them come up with app ideas. We were talking about how to come up with app ideas. But I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and go to the business model and pricing section. Now I'm going to, all I have to do is answer these questions in here and it's going to tell me um, how much to charge and how much marketing I have to do in order to make money with this thing. 
Now, before I get there, I want to show you some of the things that inspire me. Because again, a lot of times people come to me and they're like, oh, Tara, I have an idea for an app. But there's this other company that does something kind of similar. And I don't want to do anything because I can't launch it because there's already something similar. So I want to show you uh, what I'm inspired by to point out the fact that I'm not looking for an idea where no one has done anything close to it. I'm actually intentionally looking for app ideas where people have done this in other industries. So Yelp has done this really well for restaurants, right? But even for companies, I, there's a couple examples. Carmen says, will this be recorded? Uh, I think so. I think after I'm done, you can watch the recording. Uh, and then Candace says, is this part of a multi-part video series this week? Yes, I'm going to let you guys into my whole process of getting this launched. So um, one of the things that inspires me is a website called Product Hunt. If any, tell me in the chat if you've heard of Product Hunt before, producthunt.com. While that's loading, since my, web, my internet's slow. There's another one that's called Beta List. Also, Yelp.com is an inspiration for me. And anything else, anything else. Those are the things I'm pretty inspired by. So Product Hunt, if you've never heard of it before, is a directory of cool apps and startups that people are launching. So what you can do is if you come up with an app or you create something, you can go on Product Hunt and you can post it. And there's a competition every day. So these are the ones that were posted today. Lunch Club and Open Phone and Stream. These are startups that got posted today. And then if I keep scrolling down, there's a lot that are posted today. You can see what was posted yesterday and the day before. Now, every startup allows you to vote on it. So you can upvote it. And as you upvote it, I may have to log in to upvote. Okay, okay, I won't log in right now. But as you upvote it, the ones that have the most votes are at the top of the leaderboard, right? So that's how Product Hunt works. And I feel really inspired by Product Hunt. Product Hunt does not do this for courses, so it's not for what I'm trying to build, but it is something that I like. like and I'm just gonna write down some notes of things that they do that I like. I like that they have a, like a, a, a daily competition for the best ones, right? Um, and I like that people get to vote for what they like the most, right? And I like that when you click on one of the uh, products, one of the apps, if you get to the number one product of the day, right? You want to, when you post it, you want to have that like number one sign that people, I like that people can comment on it and say what they think about it. Love the product in the community building. Can't wait to keep watching your traction and growth. Right? People are saying cool things and what they think about it. So I love that you can comment underneath, right? I am not leaving it up to myself to come up with a completely um, brand new idea with nothing that anyone has ever seen before. That is not how you build a good app. You build a good app by taking a look at like, what are the elements of other apps that I think work? And you come up with your own creative mix of those things, right? I used to, like one of the things I'm really good at is innovating through taking a bunch of different inspirations and putting them in a pot together. And I used to feel really guilty about that. Like, oh, that's not real creativity until I realized that that's how everybody else was creating too. Creativity is taking a bunch of inspirations and putting your own spin on it. All right, so, so watch that this is the third step. First step was I, I reached out to see like, is anybody interested, All right? I got some, got some response. Second step is um, putting together that one sentence description. Now my third step is trying to see what inspirations are out there and then I'm going to come back and think about how much to charge in business model, All right? So, so this, is, this is product hunt and I feel inspired by this. They also have a daily newsletter where they send out the top ones, right? Daily newsletter, and write that down too. So that, just in case you weren't checking their app every day, it's right there in your email inbox, the top apps. 
Now, beta list is another one. Someone said this in the chat. This is another one I'm pretty inspired by. Um, and beta list is kind of similar. But what I like that beta list does is they've got a really good business model in here because product hunt, product hunt doesn't charge you anything to post. It's free, right? But I didn't want to make money with my app. So one of the things I think um, beta list does really well is when you click here to submit a startup. Actually, let me see. What's the best way to show you this? Uh, let me try Googling it really quickly. I want to show you their pricing. Okay. Um, not sure if I can find it very easily. But what I wanted to show you, maybe this will show us. I think they may have changed their pricing a little bit since then. Is they have a couple options. Option number one, oh geez, you can't even see this at all, can you? You can't read this. Uh, let me try to submit a startup real quick and see if it'll let me show you what their business model is. Give me a second. I'm gonna log in and see if I can find this. So, oh here, these are like some examples that I've actually already set up so you can see. Okay, so I filled this form out essentially and I um, tell them what my startup is and then here's their pricing, right? So uh, they intentionally put it last, but there is a hobby package, a startup package and a funded package. They completely made these up, right? So the free package says you have to wait one month before we post your startup on our site. There's a wait list. If you want it to be free, you can join us for free, post your idea on here for free, but you gotta wait a month. But you'll get, and you'll get featured in, um, on our site, but it'll be a random day of the week. We know that during the week, people are paying more attention to it. And on the weekend, they're kind of off with their friends and family. So you might get posted on a weekend, you might get posted on a good day. We, we get to decide, right? Can you guys read this? What's on my screen? You can see this, all right? Let me know in the chat. Um, then it says, you might possibly be included, and this is brilliant, you might possibly be included in the newsletter. And if you need some help, it's limited. <laughs> That's what this says, but you can join for free, sure. Then for $129, you can skip the wait line. So if you are ready to get customers on board and interested, you can skip right away. You get featured by this Tuesday or earlier. So like within a week, I know that my idea is gonna get featured on their app sharing site and everybody's gonna be able to see my cool app and I'll start getting customers for it. And I for sure I'm gonna get included in the newsletter, which is gonna give me even more publicity. And I'm guaranteed to get it on a weekday for maximum exposure, right? This is this plan. Then they have one more plan, which is like you skip the wait line, but you get to pick your own day. Right, and you can get featured as soon as tomorrow. Right, these plans are not all that different. They just added the extra plan, frankly. Um, so, so this I like. I like how they're doing this. How how they said that's why it's called a hobby. Yeah. So, so the way that they they set this up, right? Not only the pricing, but the verbiage, the way they wrote it, is that they have a free plan, which I'm not sure if I want to do a free plan or not. But there is a free plan, I'm just writing this down, plus a more premium plan um, where it's about like 120 something dollars to get posted immediately, all right? Um, okay, uh, there's a question uh, from Rio, it says, would you consider Yelp pricing um, CPM or ads? I'm not sure I understand your question. Can you reword that for me? I just want to make sure I understand. But but Yelp is the third inspiration I want to show you. There were three. So um, I'm not sure. So so Yelp is set up um, similarly, but for restaurants, right? Like if I have uh, a restaurant, I can post it on Yelp if it doesn't already exist on Yelp, and people can see reviews and ratings. Um, 
let's see, Yelp pricing. I'm not really sure how Yelp does their business model. Um, let's see, okay, $300 and let me see here. Let's check it out, I have no idea. I'm learning with you guys. Um, so I have to create a free business account. Anyone know what Yelp charges or how much it costs to, I know it doesn't cost anything to have a profile, to have a business on Yelp, but if I want to like promote my business on Yelp, does it cost anything? How does that work? I don't know. I'm sure if they have a business model. Um, advertisers pay as low as $30. So advertisers pay per click for people clicking on them, kind of like Facebook and Instagram do. I don't want to do this kind of model um, per click. The reason why is I, I don't want 30 cents at a time. I'd rather some sort of like lump sum um, for a business model for me. So uh, those are my three inspirations. And now I want to go back to my workbook because I want to talk about business model. And then, um, yeah. So any questions about what I've done thus far? I just want to recap the process. I'm going to do one more thing. But just to recap again, thus far, I have gone to a Facebook group to see, like, is anybody interested? I'm going to go to more Facebook groups. I just started with one. If I hadn't heard anything from that one Facebook, I would go to another. But I know from experience, like, that is something that I do regularly, post on Facebook groups like that. Lots of people responded. I was like, okay, great. Then I got clear on my one sentence description of like what this is, who it's for, what problem I'm solving, and do they even know that they have this problem? I got clear on that, right? Then the next thing that I did was I went to find inspiration. Like, what do I like about other apps and other industries? Like, what am I inspired by? Finally, I'm going to be thinking about my business model and my pricing so that now I can start actually sketching the app as the next step. So, business model and pricing. Um, there's a couple things that maybe won't make sense here, like the app pass. This is something that I teach in my program. Um, and really, let me see if I can do a quick overview of this. There are three different paths that you can go down with an app idea. We usually think that there's only one way of success with an app idea. We usually think about Facebook. Um, but there are lots of ways you can be successful with your app idea. So, so one thing that you can do is you can say, all right, I'm not worried about making money right now, right? This is the Facebook path. I'm not worried about making money right now. I'm going to make money later down the road, right? And uh, so I'm not going to charge much to, 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 to be part of my app, right? It's, it's free. This is what Facebook does. We don't pay anything for Facebook, but later on, they figured out how to make money, usually from ads. It's the Facebook path, right? So that's one route you can take, and you can see it here in my drop down. This is one route you can go is the Facebook path. Now, the other route you can go is what I call the MailChimp path. And on the MailChimp path, what you say is, no, 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 it's important. In the next six months, I need to be making money with this thing. That's not like an optional, oh, I'll do it later. Like, that's important to me. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge like a moderate fee for my app idea. And um, I still need to, I want to get lots of customers, but I'm going to charge somewhere between $12 and like $70. That's usually the range for that path. Or you can go the third way. And a lot of like enterprise products, Salesforce is a really good example of a company that does this. They say, no, 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 no. I'm going to charge premium price points for my app because I'm going to charge what it's worth. And I'm going to go after companies or I'm going to kind of reframe my app idea so that it's something more premium. In my bootcamp program, I show you how to reframe it that way. But here, I'm actually not sure, to be completely honest with you, what path I want to go down. If I were just starting, I would say the MailChimp path because it would be really important for me to be making money with it immediately. Because I have um, other businesses, I'm okay making money a little bit later down the line, but I'm gonna actually, like, actually now I'm thinking out loud. Let's optimize this for revenue. I wanna optimize this for revenue. So that's the MailChimp path, all right? So um, let me answer some of these questions. So six months from now, how much do you need to pay yourself every month to feel good about this app business and not resent the work that it requires. This is like a crit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read that again. Cause like, this is a question y'all have to ask yourselves. Six months from now, 
How much money do you need to pay yourself every month to feel good about this app business and not resent the work that it requires? All right, let me see here. You guys can think of your own number for your own idea. Um, my number will likely be higher than yours and that's okay. Um, for me to work on this at all, and to keep pursuing this, this is my number. Your number can be lower than that, that's fine. Um, my number is that way because that means I have to like pull away from other projects to work on this. So, so that's my number, all right? And then how much do you think it'll cost to run your startup each month? Um, about, in general, this is for everybody to start like $500 a month in terms of like all your software costs, all your marketing costs, all those things, that's pretty reasonable. So my monthly goal total, how much I want to make from this thing, right, is $20,000, 20500 right? Your numbers can vary. Um, no shame in your number being different than mine. My number happens to be high because I have other businesses that I would have to like pull my time away from. Sarah says, how much work does it require? That's an important question. I'm getting ready to get to that. Give me one second. Okay, so now it says, since, uh, I'm gonna move this, hold on, hold on. Okay. Roll down for me. Okay, so what I want to do is um, I want to pick now for my business model. And in general, I like, so there's a couple options here, right? You can do a monthly subscription. You can do free, this is the Facebook path, free plus make money from ads later on. You can do a one-time fee or you can do like what Uber does, which is like transaction fees. So you um, make money every time someone takes a ride. You take a cut of that. For me, I'm going to either do, ooh, this is a hard decision. I think it's a one-time fee, right? Like, I really like how Betalist does their pricing. I want to kind of align with that. So there's like a free plan, and then there's a one-time fee. I'm still not convinced that I want to do a free plan at all. Um, but for now, the way that I'll make money is not from the free plan. It's going to be from the one-time fee, right? And I'm going to pick a price. Actually, I'm going to go with the pricing structure that Betalist has right now. I might sort of adjust it a little bit, but let's just like for the purposes of this, put 129 in here. All right. So then my workbook tells me everything I need. Uh, so it says if you planned, and this goes back to how much work does it take, right? So, um, if you plan to charge $129 one-time fee, you'll need 159 new paying customers each month. This will ensure you can maintain your $20,000 goal, right? So again, if you're wondering, if you're just joining and you're wondering what this workbook is, this is the workbook that I give the students that I work with, the entrepreneurs that I work with to help them think through their idea. And it's like a smart workbook. So you put in your answers to the questions and it tells you what you need to know. So then the last question is, is this what you want? So here's the big question. Do you have the time, energy, or resources to get 159 new paying customers each month? Do you think that's a goal you can realistically hit? Honestly, it feels kind of high for me. Uh, I know that I could get it, but it sounds like it'd be a lot of work. So I do think that I can get my customers to spend a little bit more money on this, right? If you have a course or a business, I think we could probably get folks to spend a little bit more. So I might play around with this. Like, okay, let me try $2.99. How does that change how much work it'll be? Okay, now I only need 69 new paying customers. That's a lot better. So I'm going to play around with this to see what is going to fit inside of the scope of what I think my customers might pay, but also what I'm willing, like what I think is realistic to get to my number. So it's a play, a dance back and forth between those two things. Now I have a ton of tips and tricks for, for ways to take your existing app idea and to charge more, right, for it. 
Um, somebody says that 129 per year per month, neither. That would be a one time in this scenario. Um, but I'm going to play around with this to try to get the pricing right. So I feel like I have a, a, a nice middle ground. However, there are a ton of tips and tricks I have for if you need this number to be higher, what you charge to be higher, um, for ways to remarket what you're doing to be a more premium thing. So I'll give you a quick, very quick example. If I market this as just an app where you list your, your idea, list your business, then like $2.99 is starting to push it for what someone would pay for that, right? Starting to push the high end. However, if I market it as a marketing agency that helps you get clients, I get to now charge a thousand plus, right? So, so how you talk about it and how you market it is completely, it completely changes. And I, I want to get into this a little bit more. Um, so it's just a Yelp of premium courses. Yeah, I like that. Um, I want to get into that more with you guys because I have this, it's just like the skill set that I have of taking anybody's app idea and showing you how you can charge way more, like $1,000 plus for what you're doing. I'm really good at that. Uh, I'll probably show you that tomorrow. Um, but for now, like I can play around with this. Like, let's say that I marketed it more as like our agency service will help you get customers, right? And I priced it at, let's say $5.99 okay. and do something more premium. I only need 30 customers now or even at like a thousand, I need 20 customers, right? So I'm playing around with this and thinking about this, right? Makes sense? Cool. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to pause here. We've been here for an hour. I'm going to pause here because what's next is, let me show you real quick. What's next is starting to sketch out the app and actually starting to build something. And I have really ugly sketches in my notebook for what I would like for this to maybe look like. So I'm going to tomorrow, same time, same place. Well, Technically a different place. I'll email you the link. Um, if, ooh, if you're not on my email list, what's the best way? Um, go to, let me see if I can get you a link, the easy link. I don't know the word right off the top of my head. Um, if you're not on my email list yet. But there's a couple things I'd like for you to do. Tomorrow I'll come back, same time, and we'll start sketching out the app. And I'll show you what software tool I'm going to use to build it and start putting it together. Um, and then if you guys can do me a favor and tell a friend about this, have, bring someone else with you, send them the link tomorrow, cause we're going to keep building on this. So have them watch this recording and then send them the link to tomorrow so that we can grow this. Cause I want to just kind of continue this movement of sharing with people how to build an idea and how to get it out there. So yeah, you can follow me on YouTube that too. Um, Oh, you know what you can do? Let me show you what's the easiest way to, to get a notification when I go live. If you go to my Facebook page, I'll send you the link. Hold on one second. There's a little, hold on, my internet's slow. Will this live be available after end? I think, I haven't, I'm using a different software to do this, so I'm not 100% sure. Um... Nope, and I can't even do it on my page. All right, I'm gonna email you with details on how to get the link for tomorrow and I'll be better prepared with an easy link to do that. Um, but bring a friend, send like forward the email that I send you to uh, to a friend, to somebody that you know who would like, like to learn this stuff too because I wanna share it with more folks. Okay, all right, I will see you guys soon. Um, I'll see you tomorrow, same time. All right, bye. Bring your questions.